So I'm heading in to meet up with Julie and her daughters, Melissa and Emily, and their shop cat, Greeny. Now, of course, I'm always trying to save relationships. This time around, some merchandise, too. Hey. Hello. Hi. This is fun. <laughs> this is fun. But of course, that is not why I'm here, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. I'm here because of a cat. Yes. What's your cat's name? His name's Greeny. And how did you get him? A friend of mine brought me home the kitten, and so he's wow. a rescue. Oh. He's very feral. Very feral when you first got him. Mm -hmm. A feral cat is a cat that was born outdoors with little to no human interaction, and they're usually not receptive at all to human touch. On top of that obstacle, being raised as a shop cat instead of in a home caused Greeny to miss out on another opportunity to be socialized properly. What's his issue? For the first seven years, he's been great, but in the past couple years, he started peeing on my furniture and on my rugs. There's no way to know exactly why Greeny started peeing around the shop after all these years. Greeny is neutered, so at least we can rule that out as a cause for a spraying. A cat starts spraying usually as a way to express territorial panic, and something's probably happened here to panic Greeny. So he lives with you? He lives here at the shop. Okay. Ever since he was little, he's had free reign of the store. I've been around a lot of shop cats before, and it's great. Shop cats have a job. They're mousers, they entertain people when they come in, but they're not house cats. Greeny is very much part of the emotional fabric of this family, and that is a little uncommon when it comes to shop cats. How bad is the problem? Well, if you look on the floor, there's all kinds of spots. I had a customer buy a dresser from me, and he said, what's this on the handle? And I said, oh, accumulated furniture polish. And then I went like that and smelled it, and it was greeny pee. It's potentially could be any animal that comes in during story hours. Open. She's blaming a rogue squirrel or a, once, couple dogs. Or a rogue lizard <laughs> that could have like one time. Oh, you love greeny. You're trying to protect him. <laughs> she has doors open, and all these people around here are dog people, and she's dog friendly, so she lets them come on in. Oh, so okay. I've been blaming the dogs and their possible? scent. Yes, it is very Come possible. The difference between dog pee and cat pee? cat pee? Cat pee smells way worse than dog pee. That is true. Emily's in such denial mm -hmm. that she actually believes that maybe it's because people let their dogs inside the store and the dogs lift their legs. Now, both her sister and her mother understand what I understand. Dog pee and cat pee are totally different animals. Cat pee, you can smell a mile away. I want to talk to you guys separately and get your take on the experience. Who's to blame for this? Well, I'd have to say it was Emily. Greeny's my sister's cat, but yeah. she's not doing any of the day-to-day -day work. She comes once a day maybe to visit him, but I'm the one that has to clean up. I'm the one that has to do all the work involved with Greeny's upkeep. She rescues a feral. It's this nightmare cat and just dumps the feral on my mom. Can you afford to not have rugs and not have upholstered furniture and not? It's definitely hurting my business. You've noticed a change in the bottom line? Mm-hmm, I definitely have. Talking to Julie and Melissa, they agree on one thing, and that is that Emily is at the center of this whole thing. I feel horrible. I thought that coming by and visiting him on a daily basis was going to be enough to maintain that bond, but apparently his actions are saying otherwise. Now, what do you want me to do? I want you to help me show to my mom and sister that he is, you know, this wonderful, loving cat that needs to be treated like it rather than just being treated like a problem. Now that Emily's finally being honest with herself about the situation, the only way that I can see if or how I can help is to spend some time with Greeny. Where is he? Greeny. Greeny's under the green. Mm-hmm. I would like to see a Greeny. Can I see a Greeny? You take a cat like Greeny, who was born feral, then raises a shop cat without positive interactions with strangers, well, that cat's not gonna change because of all the socialization that he missed out on early in life. Talk to him. Greeny. Oh, there's, there's a the Greeny. Hi, Hi, sweetheart. Greeny. Oh my God, he's gorgeous. Can I say hello to you? Dad. No, my boy. Dad. It's okay. Oh, it's okay, sweet bean. Oh. oh, it's okay, baby. Don't be scared. The second I lay eyes on him and I hear that stressed meow, I know that Greeny has a high degree of insecurity in this territory. Has he demonstrated any measure of increased sociability with strangers? No. So then what does then fixing him look like? If I can't make him more social, 
in a huge space like the store, you just want him to be able to what? To continue on. He has a roof over his head and he's spoiled and I just want him to continue to have that life. So guys, why are you looking at me like that? You guys are all looking like I'm gonna give you bad news. <laughs> We're scared. Uh, but you knew things had to change here, right? Mm -hmm. Because he's really messing the place up pretty good. Cats pee out of a sense of territorial insecurity. Really? Mm -hmm. So there's something out there totally stressing him out at night. Whatever is out there. It could just be people or traffic or whatever it is. It makes him feel vulnerable. And then he feels like he has to act, right? So that's what he does. But the way he lives his life right now is not great for him at all. Between this huge piece of territory that he feels like he can't defend, and then the fear that he has because he's only socialized with you, and that's it. So he can feel comfortable when people are here during the day, and at night we know that he's not comfortable because he's peeing everywhere. So my homework for you is very simple. He can't be a shop cat anymore. Ooh. What are we gonna do? We're gonna make him a house cat. We're dealing with a, a degree of fear that can only be what I'm seeing here. All of the urine, all over the place, the perimeter marking, he's gotta get out of here. Now it's up to you guys to decide which home that is. What needs to be there is a catified space for this cat. He's used to hiding, so I want him to have, instead of places to cave, like closets and places like that, I want places that are cocoons, that we can keep him hidden for now, but guide him out. But then you guys doing the work is gonna help to bring him out that's going to be pretty freaking hard. It's not going to be easy, but he's your cat. I mean, he probably should be with you, right? How am I supposed to do that? Like, I work two jobs, then I work for you, and then I'm also going to school full time. Like, that's going to work? Has to go with mom. What if he pees in my house? Well, I mean, I really don't see any other option. Let's not make this an emotional decision. I don't really care where it is that he goes. But you guys asked me for the help, there it is. I'll be back in a few weeks to someone's house and we'll take it from there. All right, guys? Thank you, John. All right. All right. I'll talk to you soon. Whew. Looks like I got out of there in the nick of time. I don't want to be part of that conversation. These guys all wanted something very different from me. But what I want and what they should want is a cat that is out of that shop and into a home. <laughs>